All right, we got John Roser from the Chris Vernon Show podcast, the Chris Vernon Show live show, Grind City Media, all the other stuff. You can find him on Twitter at John underscore Roser. And he is our resident San Francisco 49ers fan, so you knew we had to get him in for Super Bowl week. Uh, and I've, I've kind of been planning this uh, basically since the playoffs began because I had a feeling that San Francisco was going to get here. Did you, did you kind of feel the same way? Uh, once the Saints lost wild card weekend to the Vikings, yeah, I kind of, I mean, I, I, it was ours to lose, you know. I mean, it technically was ours to lose anyway because we had home field advantage um, and we had already beat the Saints in New Orleans, but I know what kind of game that was the first time and I know how good that Saints team is when they're at their peak of power. So playing them twice, trying to beat them twice in the same season isn't, isn't uh, I don't envy any of those teams in the NFC South. Uh, but, yeah, once they lost, I kind of figured we're, we're in the driver's seat here. Oh, most certainly. All right, so let, let's discuss the, the game itself. A lot of people obviously in love with Patrick Mahomes. Everybody wants Andy Reid to get his, uh, his first Super Bowl. He's, you know, he's been there before, but he's never won it. Uh, give me your side of things. I know that you believe San Francisco will win, kind of like us. If you haven't watched our, our full preview uh, – we both, Chris and I, both went with San Francisco, and it had a lot to do with DVOA, right? DVOA, uh, the team that has the better defensive value over average, uh, ends up winning this game the majority of the time. Uh, over the last 17 years, they've won it 11 of the 17, and they've won the last four years straight. The better defensive team typically wins the Super Bowl. Um, now, obviously, you're not going to face. Patrick Mahomes every year. So that could kind of throw a wrench into things. But, you know, I, I live by the same rules in college football and the NFL. Uh, run the ball, stop the run, and you're going to win more than you're going to lose. Uh, is that kind of how you're feeling about this? Actually, uh, the run the ball, stop the run thing, um, not really. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't think – like. like I mean, I think Kyle Shanahan did that against the Vikings and the Packers because he could. And like he said, like, I don't think there was anything else to that. I don't think it was that he doesn't trust Jimmy Garoppolo. He's put the ball in Garoppolo's hands time and time again this season. And Garoppolo has delivered when it matters most. Um, You know, Garoppolo has had shaky games. And then when you need one drive, whether it's against – Pittsburgh, uh, like the second or third week of the season, or whether it's against um, the Rams, and you've got a third and 17 you're facing, and he finds Kendrick Bourne for 17 yards, 18 yards, and gets the first down, finds the bomb to Emmanuel Sanders, which sets up the game-winning field goal uh, for Robbie Gould. Well, he, he did um, it time again uh, uh, two years ago, so he was out basically all last year, but you know when he had the six-game winning streak after he was traded from the Patriots, he did right. that week after week. So, obviously, yeah. I, a lot of this, I think, is based on, uh, for me, I think they're going to be able to run, but it's not because they will establish the run early. I think they're going to lean on Garoppolo a lot in this game to open up the running lanes. I, I think that's what, you know, I think that's what they'll be able to do. They will own the line of scrimmage on both sides, I think. Yeah, I think, I, I think offensively, San Francisco, I, I this is crazy. I worry more about San Francisco on defense than I do on offense in this game. Um, I think offensively, the 49ers, I think we're going to be able to do whatever we want to do to Kansas City. I agree. I think we are going, I think we're going to be able to do whatever we want to do to them. Um, and, and I, just, I mean, I know this sounds like this doesn't sound, I mean, this isn't, you know, I'm not making anything up here that people haven't seen before watching football. This is kind of cliche. If the 49ers do, if we do not turn the ball over, we're going to win this game, um, which I know sounds cliche, but like Jimmy Garoppolo did throw 13 picks in the regular season, you know, in 16 games. Like he will throw a pick. He will. Um, and I've already marked him down that he's going to probably be good for one pick in this game. Um, and, and I tend to think it's which team turns the ball over twice is going to lose the game. I think both of these defenses are going to get a turnover. Um, and probably if one of them turns it over for a second time, the team that turns it over twice, that'll be the team that loses the game. 
but no, like I said, offensively, I think San Francisco is going to be able to do whatever they want to do. I think if they want to run on first down, they're probably going to have success doing it. If they want to play action pass on first down and find Debo Samuel or find Emmanuel Sanders or find George Kittle uh, or find Kendrick Bourne or maybe a running back in the flat or something, um, I think they're going to be able to do that. One of the things where Kansas City is really weak on defense is their linebackers. And if you have weak linebackers, <laughs> Kyle Shanahan is just sitting over there, you know, rubbing his – he's like Mr. Burns, you know, for the Simpsons, just going, excellent. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I've got, like, arguably the best tight end in the game on my team, and you don't have linebackers. Um so, I, 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 yeah, so San Francisco, I think we're going to be able to do whatever we want to do offensively. The defensive part is what I worry about. We have struggled against running quarterbacks. And so, obviously, I think San Francisco, 49ers, we have, I think we have the better team. We have the better roster top to bottom. But they have the best player. Uh, most certainly. And, and what you were talking about, about running quarterback, it's not just running quarterbacks. It is against basically any quarterback. Uh, if they have a designed quarterback run, uh, they've had success against San Francisco this year. So that, that does put a little worry in me. Uh, the other side of it is that San, uh, the San Francisco secondary, right? I'm, I'm a little wary of that because they do play a lot of zone coverage, right? And a ton of it. it right, it, because they, they don't have the guy. They'll, they'll have to play zone in this game because they do not have the same talent that Kansas City has at wide receiver. Uh, with Sammy Watkins and Tyree Kill and Hardman and and all all these guys are burners, so you don't have the guys that can actually keep up with them, and that's what makes it a little scary. Is okay, they've got a running quarterback that can actually get some really good yardage on those designed quarterback runs, and if you don't get pressure, which early down rate, Kansas City is really good at, or sorry, is is kind of mediocre at giving up sacks early in downs, right? First, second down. Uh, yeah. San Francisco yeah. is really good at getting sacks on first and second down. However, San Francisco is mediocre at getting sacks on third down, and Kansas City is, I mean, top of the NFL as far as, what is it, 3% of their dropbacks on third down? They have yeah. in the sack. So it's like first in the NFL. That's kind of scary. I, I think you're going to see some crazy stuff because I, I love this coaching matchup. I mean, Shanahan and Reed, oh. uh, with two weeks to prepare each, you're going to see some crazy trick plays. You're going to see fake punt, fake, uh, fake field goal, onside kick. You know, you'll see something because somebody's going to try and gain an advantage in this game, I, I think. No, no doubt. And, and Shanahan even, you know, he said after the Minnesota game, after the Vikings game, he, he said he didn't, like, what they did is what they did planned on doing like they they did not think they were going to have to throw the ball against the vikings to win that game the way they did he thought we were going to be able to come out and run the ball i know what kind of offense minnesota runs our defense is going to be able to just keep them alive you put pressure on Kirk cousins and you know all of a sudden he's not as accurate at all and he just kind of freaks out and you can sack him he's a statue back there with green bay shanahan said he said that he thought they were going to have to throw the ball more and that they were going to have to open it up a little more. And they didn't have to do that at all because they're running for seven yards a carry oh, yeah. every time. So that, that lets me know Shanahan had stuff in his bag for that Green Bay game that he didn't go to at all. Um, and that he will have, he'll have his own special place for Kansas City, but he's also got those ones. He still has a, a bag of trick plays or a bag of really, really well-designed plays that he had for Green Bay that he didn't get to use, and so he's got those. No, you're right about the coaching matchup because if you know if you want to say Kyle Shanahan's the best play caller in the league, well then, like Andy Reid's probably number two. You know, Sean Payton I know was also up there, uh, but Andy, Andy Reid's probably number two. If you want to say Andy Reid is the best play caller in the NFL, then Kyle Shanahan's probably number two. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. whichever one you want to put number one, the other one's probably number two. And Andy Reid, um, that's the thing with, with our with, with our defense, too. It's, the other thing, too, we, we do over-pursue on the edges, especially Bosa. Um, and a, probably a lot of that is because he's a rookie. Um, he will learn more di different maneuvers, different techniques. 
they've gotten the, – and so what they've tried to do at times, Robert Sala has, the defensive coordinator for San Francisco, what he's tried to do is kind of line up Bosa. Sometimes he'll put him on the inside just so he can't really over-pursue. You know, you can't oh, yeah. just go around that edge completely and give a wide-open lane to a running quarterback. Um, so, I, you know, I, I – but I think Andy Reid, you know, one of the other things we struggle against besides the running quarterback – our defense is insanely fast. The San Francisco is so fast out there, and especially since you got D Ford and Quan Alexander back. Um, you know, I think th- the other way you slow down super fast defenses is you run misdirection at them. You run screen passes on them. Um, and Andy Reid will do that and likes to do that. They will throw screen passes. Uh, Kansas City will. And so that's another thing that does – you know, that worries me as a 49ers fan. <laughs> this is, do you think the line is right? Like, I think it's sitting on two right now. Uh, do you think it's uh, it's about where it should be? If it's at two, that thing's going to go down. If it's sitting at two by now, it's going to go down. Now, it was, so, it was at one and a half, and it, it went up to two, and I actually got it at two and a half earlier today. So I would imagine it's got where? to go back to two. Uh, so several different books, you can get it, like Bet US, Bet Online had it. Uh, my bookie had it at that. So a lot of the offshores had it two and a half. Oh, the offshores. Okay, yeah. okay. Because I was say none of the ones, none of the ones that are that are on the U that are on U.S. soil. They like they. I, I mean, I still think MGM has it at one. Um, last I checked, that was this morning that that MGM still has it at one. Because uh, I was I was thinking I was listening to a gambling pod a gambling podcast yesterday. And they were saying if this if it does go to two. They said the reason these a lot of the books in America they're not going to take it to two because if they do take it to two they know these sharps are going to come and hammer San Francisco and if you look at the way it's going um, you know so the the bets are on Kansas City but if you look at the handle the handle is on San Francisco which tells you that's where the money is. That's where the real money is. The, percent, the larger percentage of bets that I saw, they're coming in on the forty. They're coming in on the Chiefs, but that the money is coming in on the 49ers. Um, and so, that, you know, that, that kind of tells you there, and that's probably why I don't think the casinos, whether it's the Westgate or Circa or MGM, Mirage, why I don't think it's really going to move that much more. I think, that, I think the place to play is uh, the, the props are probably where to go with this game. Let's see. The Westgate has it at one. MGM is one and a half. Uh, let's see. Stations, Circa, both at one. CG Technologies at one. William Hill is at one. Uh, yeah. No, you're you're right. It's sitting at one basically everywhere. Uh, let's see. Treasure Island, South Point. Yeah. It's, so it's 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 sitting around one and a half. And actually, at the offshore books that I was looking at, yeah, those are back down to one as well. So yeah, it basically as soon as as soon as I caught it at two and a half. Uh, yeah, I th- it looks like everybody else did as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's why, and that's that's why I don't think a lot of the casinos were, were, were the ones that are in the U.S. were putting it up at that number because they are like, no, nah, we know what's going to happen if we put it up there. Especially if you put it up at two and a half. If you put it up at two and a half, then everyone is just going to buy the half point and get it at three. You know, you just buy the hook, pay the extra juice to get it at a full three. Uh, for San Francisco. No, I mean, this game to me, it is, look, it's basically a pick em. The line tells you it's basically a pick em. And honestly, with the last couple of Super Bowls, you're better off just picking who you think's going to win the game. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about the spread. Just bet who you think's going to win the game because the spreads are always typically, they're not larger than, they're usually not larger than a touchdown um, in Super Bowls, you know. So, like, just pick who you think is going to win the game outright. I know the 49ers are like, to me, there would be no point in betting the 49ers plus one. Like just bet them on the money line plus the one Oh five, like get them on the money line plus one Oh five. Like that clearly the, the, would be the way to do it. The The best money line that you can get for the 49ers right now is plus plus one fifteen at MGM. Yeah. I so. take the 49ers plus one fifteen on the money line. That's, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, – I, I do. I think the 49ers are going to win the game. I had a buddy text me. He's like, well, what if it's a high-scoring game? I'm like, okay, I don't care. And they're like, come on, yeah, you do. I'm like, no, I don't. And, you know, I was talking to Chris Vernon about that on the air today, and I said, I was like, I really don't care if it's a high-scoring game. 
Like, like do, it, you, do you not it, think that Kyle Shanahan can score points against Kansas City's defense? The, the that's DVOA that exactly I was talking my about, point. Uh, San Francisco's DVOA for defense is number two, and Kansas City is 14. On the other side of that, uh, on the offensive DVOA, Kansas City is number three, and San Francisco is actually number seven in the league. So it's not like San Francisco yeah. can't score. You know, if there's anybody that I trust to be able to call a good offensive game plan, it would be Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not worried about scoring points on them. And, and this, this, the thing is, this this is why ultimately I think, you know, why, why I'm picking San Francisco is because dude, they have found a way all year. They've found a way. It's it, any We have been in every type of game you can be in. We have blown teams out. Um, we have had to run away with games in the fourth quarter. Uh, we have played, we have lost close games, but we have also won really, really close games where either the defense has to make a play and it's Drain Greenlaw getting a tackle on the half yard line against the Seattle Seahawks to win the division and clinch the number one seed, or it's Jimmy Garoppolo finding George Kittle and Kittle just makes, like, one of the greatest runs in NFL regular season history. Come and <laughs> carries, like, three dudes with him for, like, 20 more yards. It took a guy jumping on his back in that Saints game to bring him down while another Saints player is holding on and jerking around his face mask. It took a third Saints player coming and jumping on his back to bring him down. Um, you know, we we found a way, and that's I just – I tend to believe we're gonna find a way. When, when you know, the game, it, be, the game may be, the game may be, we may be winning 30, 38 to thirty five, or thirty thirty five to thirty one, late in the fourth quarter, last drive for Kansas City, and we're just we're gonna find a way to make a stop. Well, that's, we're that's gonna find gonna a say. way. Who who do you trust more to be able to get a stop in this game? And I think that's always going to be San Francisco. Like, I don't think there's any other way yep. to answer that question. Um, the reason being, they, for whatever, like you just said, all season, they have been able to find ways to get stops. Uh, tell me this, while we've got a, a few more minutes here. Um, if you are San Francisco, who do you try and take away from Kansas City? Now, obviously, this is a Bill Belichick thing, but but other teams adopt it, and, and you take away... One thing that the other team does well, or one player, and they have to beat you with somebody else. Who is that for Kansas City? I mean, and it can't be Patrick Mahomes, obviously. So, like, what? What? No, you, no, no. You know, do you take away Kelsey? Do you take away uh, Tyreek Hill? Uh, I think it's maybe? impossible. I think it's impossible to take away Tyreek Hill. I think he's too fast. I think he's just too fast to take away and take out of the game. He's gonna. That guy may have one catch in the game, but it's gonna be one catch for sixty-five yards and a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like you're not gonna totally take him away. He's way too fast. I agree. Um, I will tell you who worries me a little bit, and I'll say Damian Williams. Really? Just that screen fast. game, man. <laughs> And I over and I'm and I may be overthinking things, but I'm think, trying to think how Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan would think, and they're both way smarter than me when it comes to anything football. <laughs> um, <laughs> like they're smarter than all of us when it comes to anything oh, football. Yeah. Um, so I tend to think, like, man, maybe he's going to come out and try to run the ball on the edges a little bit, and then he'll come back with a screen pass the other direction or something, you know. Um, uh, obviously, it, it, it's almost like if you take away Travis Kelsey, you kind of take away the middle of the field a little bit, you know, so that would obviously be huge. Um, I don't know who we're going to put on Kelsey. I don't know if we'll line up Sherman on him at times. I don't know if we will line up Fred Warner on him at times. I don't know if it could be Quan Alexander. Um, Quan is going to make a big difference in the, in the screen game if Kansas City does choose to go to it. Quan Alexander will make a huge difference because he is so fast. As a linebacker, he will make a big difference. I will say, but I'll, I'll say back to back to your question. Um, I guess Kelsey, because I'm so sick of hearing Chris Vernon telling me he's the best <laughs> tight end in this game. I'm so yeah. sick of it. I would love nothing better than for Travis Kelsey to have 
three catches for 28 yards in this game. I'd love nothing more than that. I, I'm I'm agreeing with you. I, the everybody talking about him. Not it, it's not like he's a bad tight end, um, but for people to think that he's better than Kittle, I just don't buy it. I, it it doesn't make. You don't sense watch the game. It's yeah. just because because people people well it's because people like Chris Vernon don't pay attention to blocking at all. Uh, dude, right. this, this dude this dude in the Vikings game. All right, if you dude, he pancake block Everson Griffin, just like. Pretty much one play picked him up off the ground. It's like the play in the movie The Blind Side. Oh, yeah. When Michael Oher is the blind side, just takes the guy and just moves him all the way. That He, like, he could have done that with Everson Griffin if he wanted to in that game. But when he was at Iowa, that's what he was used for. I mean, it, what was it? He played 63 college games, and he caught 64 passes. I mean, it, you yeah. know, like it, he, he wasn't used as a passing or a pass-catching tight end. Um, He... he was taught blocking by Kirk Ferentz, of all people. So there's more to a tight end than just being a receiver. Uh, if, if you were just going to have a receiver at tight end, then, you know, probably what, O.J. Howard would be the most talented, I guess. I right. Mean, there's, there's all sorts of different ones out there. But uh, but for the all-around well, game, they, they, and, and what Kelsey brings, or not Kelsey, what, uh, uh, what Kittle brings to um, to the running game, I mean, those zone blocking schemes that, that Shanahan has, uh, it, it's why Mostert has, has done so well there as opposed to everywhere else. I mean, he's been on, what, what six teams? Is that right? I mean, he's been all over the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, if, 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 especially if you look at how they use uh, how they use Mostert, how they use him is, like, because he's, like, he's basically, he's like track speed, you know? Yeah. He's like track speed. They run to the outside. Well, who do you think holds down the edge there to allow him to get outside and get through those holes? Exactly. It's George Kittle. Their running success rate, I think I saw, when Kittle is the when Kittle is in there blocking and they run the ball, their running success rate is like 63 to 66%. And when he is not in the game, it goes down to like 34%. Oh, yeah. Now, the other side of this is right. you've got wide receivers that, that understand that blocking is part of their job as well, uh, and there's not a lot yes. of teams that, that teach that. Um, but, I mean, you, San Francisco just has a, a full team here, I think. I think I think having guys like – I mean, look, Garoppolo hasn't started in a Super Bowl game, but he has been to the – he's been around Super Bowl week because yeah. being with the Patriots. He knows what the week is like. He knows what this is like. And all the fanfare and all the media and how, you know, wild it is. He knows what it's like. And then it also helps when you have a guy like Richard Sherman who's been here before. Joe Staley who has been here before and has been with the 49ers his entire career since the, since the mid-2000s. And Joe Staley was here, was in the Super Bowl with the 49ers back when they lost to the Ravens. And then a guy like Emmanuel Sanders who has played, who has played in the Super Bowl before. Like these guys have been, those guys, having those guys, like having someone like Debo Samuel be a rookie and – he looks across at him at wide receiver, and that's Emmanuel Sanders you can lean on. And Emmanuel Sanders can help you out during Super Bowl week. And Richard Sherman can help out a lot of these defensive guys, uh, whether it's Emmanuel Mosley, whether it is Nick Bosa. Um, he can really help these guys out. And I think the other thing is D Ford can help out this 49ers defense with kind of knowing where Kansas City kind of likes to go with things. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, that That is a... I figured that would have been a bigger storyline this year, uh, considering D. Ford was, you know, everybody wants to blame him for Kansas City not getting there last year, and now he's on the 49ers, and they make it to the Super Bowl, and he has to play against his old team. You know, I figured that more people would be talking yep. about that, uh, but I haven't seen a lot about it. Uh, but it's not like he doesn't know what Kansas City does and what their tendencies are, which obviously you can learn a lot from, you know, just film and whatnot, but... But having somebody that was in the trenches with them last year that knows exactly what goes on in that locker room, I mean, it's, it's kind of a game changer to me. I mean, there's no doubt about that. It helps. No, you're I mean, it, it, look, look it, it, it doesn't hurt you at all. The other, the other thing, too, is I think what has, been, what has been good about at least what I've seen, I was worried all week because when you got a guy like Sherman, you never know what he's going to say, what he's going to do. True. Um, you have not heard anything out of the 49ers in this game, in this, this week. You have not heard anything from them. Like, trash talking, you have not heard any of it. And 
you've heard a little bit from Kansas City. You've heard a little bit from them. Yeah. That they're confident, whether, whether you know, it's Frank Clark or Tyran Matthew, Honey, or Honey Badger or whatever. Um, you know, uh, okay, I do. Tyree Kill, obviously. Yeah, Tyree Kill did give Tyree Kill did give the ultimate respect to Richard Sherman. Said, "I'm not, you know, I'm not just going to say this about Richard Sherman, you know." And by, by paraphrasing, basically, like he's a legend. He's one of the best to ever play his position, and I hope I can do a jersey swap with him after the game. You know, <laughs> gave him the ultimate sign of respect. You know, um, but yeah, you know, Frank Clark, he's a guy that'll talk trash. Um, and I know big people are looking at the running defense of Kansas City because they held Derrick Henry to like 77 yards. Dude, Tennessee totally screwed up that second half. Oh, yeah. They completely abandoned Derrick Henry. Once they got that first stop in the second half to open the second half, Kansas City's up 21-17 at halftime, and Kansas City gets the ball coming, coming out of halftime, and the Chiefs don't put together a drive, and they have to kick it away. It's yeah. like, okay, Titan, now you can go back to playing the way you want to play. Like, you you got the oh, stop. Yeah. You can go back to playing the way you want to play. And Derrick Henry only got three carries in that second half. Arthur Smith, their offensive coordinator from Tennessee, just I mean, they completely abandoned him. Hey, and the other thing, too, is, yeah. And the other thing, too, is you cannot compare. I get Derrick Henry is great, but you cannot compare – the Titans run the ball. The Titans line up like they like power eye formation and run the ball. That's how they do it. Like the 49ers do not do it that way. They run the ball all different kinds of ways, and they use different running backs to do it. Oh yeah, no, it, it is completely different. You're uh, you're a hundred percent right on that. All right, uh, let's see. That is that is plenty of Super Bowl talk. We'll uh, we'll get out of here. We will. It, it's so long as San Francisco wins, and and John isn't in a deep depression. Then, then we will have Roser back again next week. Uh, I'll be doing everything solo next week. Chris will be in Disney, so uh, so I will be handling recap duties and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, you can find them which, over- which, by the way, yeah. but, by the way, is is so ridiculous. How are you planning a trip to Disney World the week of the Super Bowl? What is that? Uh, so I, I understand where he's coming from. Um, it, it is the least busy week of the year at at Disney. Uh, he's got two little. Because everyone's in Vegas. At, yeah. <laughs> he uh, he yeah. actually dad, he, all the dads all the dads are in Vegas pretty much pretty much or everybody's yeah. watching the Super Bowl right so they're uh, they're going to be in the right. kingdom uh, the day of the Super Bowl now he and his wife have dinner and whatnot the game will be on you know where they go out to dinner and whatnot so uh, and with with New England not being in the Super Bowl this year you know it it was what it was he planned it a couple of months ago he kind of had a feeling New England wasn't going to get there so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but I, I can kind of understand it, right? It, it's a cheaper time of year to go, and I get it. However, if you are covering sports media, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe stick around for the Super Bowl, you know. Uh, but he, I will say this. He handled plenty of Super Bowl coverage leading up to it. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know that people are so worried about reactions to it as they are the buildup for it. At least our numbers don't uh, don't say otherwise. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't know, super, I might would have waited another week. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it is crazy. Like the build up to this game has not been, um, what you would normally expect from a super bowl, Agreed. especially a super bowl where I think you ask a hundred people and 99 of them are going to tell you, this is going to be an amazing game and it's going to probably be one of the best super bowls you've ever seen. Um, you know, it, it, the, the, and, and, may, and may, I think Probably some of that also has to do with Kobe Bryant. Yeah, um, I, I think a lot of it has. You to know, do. and you know, rest in peace, Kobe, Gianna, the seven others that were on that plane. Hashtag Mamba forever. Um, that one tore me up. That one tore me up a little bit. I still can't believe it. Uh, I. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.